So our next storyteller is the founder and executive director of the Sani Foundation in Zambia. Um, the Sani Foundation's mission is to advocate for the full inclusion of people with intellectual disabilities into Zambian society. Um, her story's amazing, she is amazing. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Michelle. Hello everyone, and thank you again. Um, so, I'm from Zambia, and Zambia, like most African countries, is a country that's progressing and developing. And all the while, one group of people keeps falling further and further behind. People with intellectual disabilities are like a complex mystery that society just can't be bothered to figure out, so we just choose to ignore them. And I would like to stand here today and tell you just how many people with intellectual disabilities are being neglected in Zambia, but I can't because we don't even have statistics on intellectual disability. They don't count, so they don't even bother to count them. They just don't. I'm Michelle Chimuka, and I am the founder and director of Sunny Foundation, an organization working to promote inclusion for people with intellectual disabilities in Zambia. I grew up with a brother with an intellectual disability, Down syndrome to be specific, and that opened up my eyes to just how flawed my society was. We grew up in the exact same house, under the exact same circumstances, but I was the only one that got to go to school got to play with other kids in the neighborhood, got to get a job and essentially have a life. And all this was because he didn't fit the social constructs of normal. And as we grew up, I wondered and I worried about what the rest of his life would look like. And so I founded the Sunny Foundation to give him and other young people with intellectual disabilities a chance to also have a life. And what we do is we provide individualized, relevant and holistic support to young adults with intellectual disabilities. And beyond that support, we help them to find jobs in the open labor market. And I'll tell you very specifically about Diana, one of our members. When she joined our program quite early on, all she said was, I wanna cook. She didn't know how to, but she loved to watch people in the kitchen. She loved to be around people doing that sort of thing. And quite frankly, she liked to eat. <laughs> so <laughs> we went to work. We supported her, we trained her, and she got an internship as a kitchen assistant in a nonprofit organization. A couple of months later, the organization came back to us and says, we think she's brilliant. We wanna hire her, we wanna pay her, and they did. And Diana got her first job working in the food industry. Today, Diana works in a Subway fast food restaurant and is probably one of the highest earners in her family. No, not probably, she is one of the highest earners in her family. And essentially, this is what we all want. We want to pursue our dreams. We want to follow our passion. We want choice. And that is what is unique about our model in Zambia. It is person-centered. It, it values personal choice. And really, we're really working to change the narrative around intellectual disabilities, to challenge and transform people's perceptions around disability. We really want people to move from thinking about people with intellectual disabilities as beneficiaries who are deserving of pity and charity, to really considering them as dependable and loyal employees, as friends and coworkers that you sit and have a laugh with, you know, as active and participating citizens. Because really, um, Employees with intellectual disabilities, it's been proven, have better attendance and retention records than people without disabilities. Hiring people with disabilities gives companies more innovation, new perspectives, and access to newer markets. So really, at the end of the day, inclusion isn't just that it's the right thing to do, it makes business and economic sense. Why wouldn't we do it? Thank you. <laughs> My goodness. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I, as someone, so I'll just start off by saying I'm, I'm someone who has not a lot of experience or knowledge um, with 
the intellectual disability field and, and who works in it or the space or like what's needed. Um, I guess kind of starting as an introduction question, if you had one or two or just something to say to people who are just to spread broad awareness about it, um, what would you say? Um, I think it's really w with what I was talking about, about changing perceptions. Um, we were in a session in here earlier about making markets accessible, accessible to marginalized groups. And one of the speakers talked about how vulnerable groups are lumped together. And even within the disability community, disability is so broad and multidimensional and complex. And when, you, when people say people with disabilities, in a Zambian context, for instance, I will talk specifically about my own country. When people talk about disability, people think of physical disability, visual impairment, hearing impairment. Lots of times we say we work in intellectual disability and people are like, what? So we sort of have to then break it down. Yeah. So it comes to that point of people not even knowing about this issue. And that's always the challenge to people, educate yourself, meet someone. And every time I speak to somebody in Zambia again, they will always have a cousin, an aunt, a neighbor, someone at church who has a disability, but nobody knows anything about it. So literally people need to start by educating themselves. Yeah. Make a friend. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the other thing I was really curious about, I, I love that your foundation has a really holistic approach. So it's everything from vocational training to finding them jobs in the marketplace and sector. Um, I'm wondering, from your perspective, is there anything, is there a gap or is there a particular problem that you're trying to address or a specific win you're looking for in the next year or two? Um, the, I won't beat on this drum again about changing perceptions because I think I've been quite clear about that. But I think we really want people with intellectual disabilities to be everywhere you go. Mm. To, you should be able to run into someone with an intellectual disability in the supermarket, at church, you know, at school, and all of these different things. We want them to be part of the daily life because that changes so much. Even just with our experiences of what exists now in Zambia is that there are programs that are sheltered for people with disability because they're, they're not considered able to work in the open labor market. And that's the one thing that we do. We want to get people with disabilities out um, mingling with people without disabilities because that's the only way real change is going to happen. I have faith with you. It's going to happen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.